Hey guys, it's Finn. In this video, we are actually going to start coding the genomes and that stuff. For this, the first thing I want to do is actually uh, implement the most important class that we need. It's the the need class. It's basically like everything that we're going to do will be placed in here. Everything. It will keep track of every genome, of every gene, of every connection. Uh, and this is basically going to w deal with everything that we're going to have. But um, we're going to fill this class later. First, we want to create a, a new class called Gene. And Gene is, uh, we've got connection gene and node genes. Um, you should probably remember them from the first video. So um, basically, the only thing that we have for a gene is the innovation number. We're going to deal different uh, with them for our connections and our nodes. But basically, this class only uh, has an innovation number, a uh, constructor, and the getter and setter. That's basically it for this. Uh, later on, I'm going to implement a constructor that takes the innovation number, so you can already do this for now. Furthermore, we need a, a node gene. This is basically a gene for our nodes. It's going to extend the gene, and in there, we, we don't have a lot of a lot of stuff, I think. Um, what we're going to add is a X and an Y value. We're going to need this for drawing, and the X value is very important for calculations. Um, the idea is that to not have any recursion or anything, we only want to allow um, connections from from a node with lower x value to a node with higher x value. This is I, I've gotten um, I've got many questions from you, and they ask me like how how do you deal with recursion, and this is basically how I do that. So um, in here, I created the new constructor that takes the innovation number as an argument. The node gene constructor takes the innovation number as well and calls the super constructor. Um, what we also need is a getter and setter for the x and y value. They're not yet that important, but we're going to need them later. So basically, the, uh, the main purpose for them is for drawing. Um, we also need an equals method and a hash code method. If you're not familiar with equals or hash code, basically, we um, hashing is a method to assign a number to our objects. and they are represented by that number. And we, in the previous video, we implemented a hash set, and this one uses um, the hashing algorithm, um, basically, basically the hash code. So uh, each object gets a number, and that's how the how the method works uh, deep inside. So the hash code is simply going to return the innovation number. The e equals method simply checks if the innovation number is equal to the other other's gene uh, innovation number. Next, the connection gene is the next gene we need to uh, implement. Um, this is actually the mo more important class and a little bit more complex. We've got two node genes, the from and the to object, and we've got a wait and if it's enabled or not. So these are the four most important things for our connections, and we don't need much more for now. So we've got we are going to create a constructor that takes the from and the to node gene and we're going to um, implement some getters and some setters. This is pr pretty straightforward for now. Um, next, what we need is a equals method like we had with the node gene and a hash code. The equals method simply checks, this is very important now, the equals method only checks if the from and the to gene are equal. It doesn't matter about the weight or if it's enabled or not. The idea is that the innovation number of our connection gene um, it's actually, we don't really need that. Well, we kind of need that, but not really. Um, in theory, once, let's say every node gene has a innovation number, um, every connection is already determined by the nodes that it's connected to. So if a node goes from node A from node to node B and we've got another connection that has the same nodes, they must have the same innovation number. So we're going to store the innovation number, but not yet. So the equals method only checks if the from and the to um, to node are equal. It doesn't really matter about the wake because wakes can change from client to client. But this is a little bit too far into the topic for now, and I'll show uh, this to you later on. So we simply return uh, the two equals um, methods that we implemented for the node gene. The hash code is um, pretty similar. We do not use the innovation number of the connection gene, but the con the innovation numbers of our uh, nodes. 
and for this we have got two nodes we need a maximum number of nodes and if we have let's say uh, roughly 1 million that's 2 to the power of uh, tw yeah 2 to the power of 20 is roughly 1 million um, if we've got this many uh, neurons at max we can simply multiply to the from that get innovation number and add the to innovation number and we will always end up with a new number for a combination of from and to node uh, assuming that we do not go over our max maximum uh, number of nodes so um the next thing that we need to do is is implementing the genome class for this i'm creating a new class called genome and this is basically a set of connection genes and node genes. Um, to sign these, we will use our cl class random hash set, and um, we we've got two of them: one for the connection gene and another one for the node genes. If you can see in the um, diamond brackets, we are putting the class that we are using. So this is basically how we use generic data types. We want always want uh, we also want to directly initialize our new objects. So um, what we need to store in the genome is basically need is our m most important class. So in there are all our, all our constants and so on. So it needs to be stored in our genome to uh, simplify calculations. Um, let's also do some getters and setters. We don't need setters for now, but we need getters for all of these three uh, variables. The constructor takes the need object as the argument, and um, yeah, basically this is almost it for the genome class for now. Uh, we will um, later implement lots of stuff. So uh, if you've watched the first video, we will have something like the distance function that determines the distance between two genomes. Also, we are going to have the crossover method that crosses two genomes into a new genome. This is going to be static. Um, I will explain this why later on or in the next video when we implement them. Um, I'm not going to implement them yet, but in in an, in the future sometime, um, because they're way too complicated. Like both of them are very similar, but a little bit too complicated. Uh, also, we might want to mutate our genome um, in order to like uh, get new connections and that stuff. For the crossover thing, it's very important to note that the G1 genome is uh, supposed to be uh, to be better in terms in terms of score. But this isn't important yet, like. So, this was basically it for this video. I hope you liked it, and I hope to see you in the next video.